Okay, so now we will start today. Uh, the topic today we are discussing is basically uh, the disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs, which is known as, which is uh, abbreviated as DMARS. Okay. So, uh, first of all, we will define what is what are DMARS. They are basically the uh, drugs that are actually immune modulators and they are believed to restore a normal immune environment within the joint system. DMARs are basically used for, for the uh, joint problems, like uh, mainly the problem like rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, so uh, rheumatoid arthritis, which is a chronic in, uh, inflammatory joint disease, uh, usually when this is not responded by the COX inhibitor and other answer, then we go to the next regimen that is uh, the disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. DMARs are basically they are the slow acting anti rheumatic agents and that you usually work with, with the with, within the weeks usually the, the acute response is not there they take usually 10 to 14 weeks or even more to you know, give their impact uh, mechanism of action is different they do not act by the cox inhibitor do not have any analgesic activity also they have very little anti-inflammatory. So their mechanism of action is different. But you will see the different group of uh, agent in this uh, drug, not uh, uh, classified as N cell or others. They are mixed group of drugs present in, in this system. Oh, the main function of all of these drugs, to summarize that, that the <clears throat> effect on the immune system and they basically suppress the immune system. Okay, slow course of disease, they induce remission and they, uh, the main function is not to cure, but further to prevent the further destruction in the joints. <clears throat> so, you know, chronic inflammatory disease, all you have to manage is to give relief to the patient. Uh, the, the disease is not at a stage that it is cured completely, but just to minimize the symptoms. Usually we give the therapy and we see if the response is within the three weeks. If, the, if there is no response within the three months, sorry, then we change to the regimen. So they are very slow acting. We have to monitor the patient. We have to uh, bring them on follow. Okay, this is the goal of therapy. Uh, the main uh, of the, uh, goal of therapy is to alleviate pain, uh, slow the progression of the disease, uh, prevention of different function, control disease activity, maximize quality of life. So the, the role is mainly to basically uh, not to cure rather than to relieve the symptoms. Uh, other medicines like NSAID, uh, they are sometimes also added initially for the uh, provide faster relief of the pain because you know when patient come to you and you, you give him some prescription, he always want or she always wants to, to have some response. If, if a patient is taking medicine for a week and he is not getting any response, so it, he might be reluctant to take further medication. So we initially add some of the answers so, so that uh, initial relief of the symptoms like pain, but the main therapy is basically the DMARS. Okay, there are uh, a list of uh, drugs in the, that is present in the DMARS. So we have to decide uh, which drug we will apply depending upon the stage and severity of the uh, condition. Uh, so, <clears throat> balance between possible adverse effects, patient preference. So, all you have to decide on, on to the patient that which uh, DMARD you have to select. <clears throat> also, you uh, briefly explain to the patient the possible adverse effect, uh, the, the dosing regimen, because this is very much important. You have to tell to the patient that you are going to have a long-term therapy. Initially, uh, four to six weeks, you will not have any uh, uh, clear relief, but then after uh, the therapy, you will find out the expected results. You, you all have to 
uh, explain to the patient. Otherwise, the, the long therapy will not be there. Okay, right now we come to the main pharmacology. What are the different uh, uh, DMARTs or disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs we use? We classify into two main uh, divisions. First is known as oral DMARTs, they are known as classical DMARTs. And the, new, the second one uh, is the biologic DMART. So they are the uh, new uh, drugs, or advanced therapy, and that in includes antibodies and parenteral therapy. So oral or classical DMARTs or biological or parenteral DMARTs is the main classification. Okay. Now, well, first we are <coughs> discussing with the oral DMARTs. Then we will go to the biological DMARTs. In the oral DMARTs, we have also the first line therapy, or, 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 and then we have the uh, second line therapy or the second preference. So the first line drugs, we have the main drug is methotrexate. Okay, we always tell you that never miss a leading drug whenever you are asked to a question in Vive or anywhere. If, some, if somebody asks you about the DMARTs, you should not miss the first line drug, and especially the methotrexate. The methotrexate is the classical choice for oral DMARTs or first line therapy. Then we have sulfasalazine, hydroxychloroquine, lefunomide. So you will find out the different varieties of, of different groups of drugs within this DMART. They have a different mechanism of action. Ideally, they, they are used for the other purpose. For example, everybody knows that methotrexate is an anti-cancer drug. Chloroquine is an anti-malarial drug. So, so the sulfasalazine is, is also an antibiotic. So the different groups are there, but the, the function of all of them is the same that they basically affects or modulate the immune system because the immune system is the main cause of this rheumatic disorder. So you all have to mainly modulate or rather you have to decrease the uh, uh, immune function. Okay. So the first line is the uh, mesotoxic, sulfatalazine, cardiochloroquine, lefunomide. Then in the second line or less frequently used drugs, we have the gold salts, azathioprine, azathioprine and cyclosporine, you know, they are the two most commonly uh, immunosuppressant drugs, the, the specific immunosuppressant drug that you give in the transplant patient as well. So again, the function is to reduce the uh, immune function. They are the second line therapy. So remember the classification. In the oral, you have first line, and these are the four drugs. And the second line, or less frequently, we have this cold cells uh, as a type in cyclosporine. Now we come define uh, with the uh, individually. For example, methotrexate, uh, I know uh, I told you that they, it's an anti cancer drug. The main function of this drug is to uh, inhibit uh, an enzyme known as dihydrofolate. So usually, uh, this drug is given for uh, rapidly proliferating cells when the cells are dividing quickly. You, you can stop their proliferation uh, by, by inhibiting this enzyme. But here, what methotrexate given, the dose is also important. In the chemotherapy, the dose is very high. In, in, in the DMARS, the dose is low. Uh, so uh, what else methotrexate has function? Uh, along with dihydrofolate reductase inhibitory activity, the, it also affects the uh, cytokines like TNF-alpha and IL-10 or interleukin-10. So this drug also decreases the TNF alpha activity while it increases the inhibitory activity of cytokine IL-10. So these two uh, players, TNF alpha interleukin, they are the, the uh, players for inflammation. So they, the effects on this TNF alpha and IL-2. Drug uh, doses, I told you, uh, is very less than chem cancer chemotherapy. The, the, usually it is given in 7.5 milligram per degree. Okay, so the, but what you have to remember is that the dose of methotrexate is uh, very low as compared to its uh, anti-cancer therapy in case of DMARS. Every drug has a side effect, especially anti-cancer drugs has always very severe side effects. So mucosa, ulceration, uh, pneumonia, other uh, side effects of the uh, methotrexate. If you give NSAID along with it, it also increases toxicity. So NSAID are, are not uh, given along with this drug. Antifolate drugs also. So NSAID and antifolate drugs should not be combined because 
But but we will see in the coming slide that remarks are usually given in combination. So you have to um, uh, understand what are the drug interactions because they are given in the combination. So you should have a knowledge. Okay, which drugs should be combined? Otherwise, it will further deteriorate the condition. So NSAID antifoliates are not given along with methotrexate, and uh, it it is also a tyrosinergic drug. So you should not give any the pregnancy. Okay. The second drug we have is sulfasalazine, and uh, sulfasalazine uh, is basically is a sub, uh, causes a suppression of the T cell response. T cells. Uh, the lymphocytes. So it basically uh, uh, it's also uh, has an antifoliate action as well. So this uh, sulfasalazine you know, suppresses uh, the T cell response as well as it affects the antifoliate action. And what it uh, basically do? It it suppresses the activity of T lymphocytes, which are the uh, agent for uh, immune system or the main player of the immune system. Okay. Then uh, after sulfasalazine, we have the hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine. Chloroquine, you know, is, is a well-known antibacterial drug. Uh, although you know the mechanism that it basically uh, uh, affect the heme uh, function of the uh, the the protozoa, but additionally, this chloroquine has further action. It also uh, modulate the immune system and exert anti-inflammatory and immune. You would have also uh, heard about chloroquine. The chloroquine initially when there was a pandemic of COVID, it, it was known that chloroquine is also helpful in the, in the coronavirus. So this chloroquine has a multiple function. It is used for the other uh, purpose as well. So, so along with this uh, anti-protozoal action, it also has an anti-inflammatory and immune modulating activity. So it suppresses the T lymphocytes leukocyte chemostaxis and trapping of the free radical. Good thing about chloroquine, it's a, a long half-life because it, it penetrates the tissue and it stays there. So chloroquine can also be given mm, as, as a DMAR or as a first-line oral DMAR. Uh, okay. The side effects of chloroquine, you know, it, it, it may cause retinal damage, skin discoloration, alopecia, this they are the few side effects of the uh, chloroquine. Then we have a drug known as leflunamide. Leflunamide basically is again an anti-cancer drug, uh, and uh, and uh, it inhibits the pyrimidine synthesis activity and prevents T cell proliferation. Okay. Uh, this drug has a faster onset of action than other. It is well absorbed orally. So this is uh, an again a uh, anti-cancer uh, drug, and uh, it uh, also affects on to the uh, activity. Side effects of leflunamide is, is long, like GI disturbance, mouth ulcers, abdominal cramps, easy blood pressure, headache, abdominal liver function. So, because you know that anti cancer does have a long list of uh, side effects. Again, another drug for the oral is penicillamine. Penicillamine is an antibiotic, you know, uh, it's a cell wall inhibitor, but uh, along with this, uh, it has a different function, like it. It is an analog of amino acid cysteine in pair antigen presentation, diminish globulin synthesis to inhibit uh, white blood cells or polymorph nucleosides. Myelopathy. So, uh, along with this antibiotic activity, it also has an activity uh, onto the uh, antigen system. So, it also depresses the uh, reaction. Side effects of penicillin is the GI upset base impairment, thrombocytopenia, and the allergic reaction. So you will find out the group of drugs. All you have to remember, not their mechanism of action, because every drug has a different mechanism of action. Additionally, they all have uh, impact on 
their immune system. Azathioprine, this is, you know, uh, a second line uh, drug, and this azathioprine is uh, basically uh, an immunosuppression. You know, it's a very well known immunosuppression. So it's uh, uh, metabolized to 6 purine and it causes the inhibition of cellular immune response. Again, causes nausea, rash, bone marrow suppression, and the liver toxicity. Then we have the cyclosporine. Cyclosporine is an, uh, also a fungal peptide, and it, it bears a function of B and T lymphocytes, suppressing the synthesis and release of interleukin 1 and 2. The dose is used usually 2.5 milligram per kg. Uh, and uh, this goes to increase gradually with after six weeks to a maximum of four milligram per kg. The full response is uh, within uh, 12 weeks. Again, I told you that the therapy required months to, to have their impact. So this is, uh, we are discussing with the second line therapy of the oral DMARs, okay? Gold charts, they were of, uh, in part, uh, previously they were used Although nowadays gold charts are not very much recommended, but they have a uh, have an effect on inflammation. Most of the time, if we find out in uh, in in, in uh, other than allopathic medicine, uh, the the medicine given by uh, so called in our community as Hakim or other thing, they usually use these gold salts in their uh, in their medicines. So this gold salts, what gold salts have a property that they basically uh, are also the good immune modulators. So immune modulator, so any disease which is related with the immune, it can decrease, uh, it can decrease the symptoms of this disease. So gold sodium thiomylate uh, is present, parothioglucose, orofenin, orinoxin, sorry. These are the different drugs. They are injectable as well as orally present. So they can also be used, uh, they can also be categorized in the uh, DMARS. Mechanical version is, uh, is that specifically they, they are taken up by the macrophages and suppress the phagocytosis and lysosomal enzyme activity. Half-life is also long. So usually uh, they have a macrophage action. Uh, so chronic inflammatory disorder can be uh, affected by the gold salts, and they are the gold salts are can be given in any inflammatory condition. So people uh, uh, is uh, having uh, this problem. I think it was shown that the internet is unstable. So I mean, take a pause for a minute. I just want to confirm because it was shown on my slide that your internet is unstable. So I don't know whether you people are listening to me or not. I've got a technical support with this. Okay. Otherwise, if you are listening, then we can go, go ahead. So gold salts, I was telling you that they, uh, we can hear you, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you, Salah. So it's fine that you are listening. So gold salts, uh, they act on macrophages and suppress the phagocytosis. Okay, so the previous slide that we were discussing, they were all uh, related to the oral remarks. And in, in oral remarks, we discussed the drugs like uh, uh, we have a panel of drugs that we discussed is, for example, we discussed the other area of the chocolate response. Okay, so we discuss the first line that's like methotrexate, sulfasalazine, hydroxychloroquine. They are the first line uh, drug of the oral remarks. And then we discuss this cold salts as a therapy in cyclosporins. 
So this is the oral uh, demand that we discussed individually. I, I told you that again, the individual mechanism is not very important, but all of them are somehow related with, uh, with the suppression of the immune system. Now we come to the second category, uh, 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 second part of the talk that are basically biological demands. Nowadays, with the current advancement of the different therapy, we have a new class of demand that is known as biological demands. Okay, so biological demands are basically, they are the genetically engineered antibodies and proteins, and they are, uh, they are made uh, with the help of the biotechnology, and they are basically target specific proteins. So, uh, this is this is known as biological therapy uh, because they are actually the drugs are uh, genetically engineered from the human uh, gn dna or and, and they are dna modified drugs so they are this is why they are known as biological demands these drugs basically affect on uh, to uh, specifically on uh, the mediators like tumor necrosis factor alpha uh, so one of the class belong to this is the tumor necrosis factor alpha blocker. Then we have interleukin one and six uh, blockers, and we have also the CD20 and CD1. So they are the specific, you know, biological demand. So they are like antibodies and antibodies. They specifically affect the target organ. So you should, uh, in that case, you should uh, hear the mechanism action is important. You should know which one is TNF alpha blocker, which one is interleukin one and six blocker, which affects on CD20 and CD28. So they are the targets and for other things. This is a list you will find out uh, the different names like we have uh, adalimumab, okay, etanacept, infliximab, the different uh, drugs uh, we have shown the target uh, uh, action like uh, the initial drug like adalimumab, etanacept, they are TNF alpha blocker. Abetacept is CD20, anakinda is interleukin 1 inhibitor, tuximab is CD20, and the other one. So here you, you should remember the specific mechanism of where they are acting. Okay? In, in case of the oral, uh, I told you that mechanism is not very much specific, that they all somehow related affecting the immune system affecting all TNF alpha 6, but they are target specific. So you should be very careful while uh, uh, defining the mechanism. You cannot say the oh, abatacept may affect TNF alpha or CD20, no. Specifically, uh, anakindra is IL-1 inhibitor. So you should be very specific and you should remember it. Okay. So we discuss uh, one by one. For example, although it's difficult to define every uh, drug, but I try to focus on some important uh, uh, biological development. Adalimumab is basically a recombinant human anti-TNF monoclonal antibody. Uh, it reduces the formation of new erosions in the, in the inflammatory conditions. That there, are eros it's, uh, there are erosions, so it reduces the formation of new erosions. All of these uh, biological demands, they are given uh, parenterally. They defend why we call uh, classical demands as oral demands because they are given orally, whereas these biological demands, they are the parenteral uh, therapy. So subcutaneously, it is given half-life is like 9 to 14 days. Dose is there, but dose is not very important. Because in pharmacology, we do not much discuss with the dose. Uh, so monotherapy or in combination, and uh, with methotrazine, it, it is action potentiated. So you can also combine with the classical DMARs. Usually, I told you that DMARs are given in combination. One of the drugs is classical DMARs. The other, we can combine with any other drugs. Okay. Adverse effects, they have a macrophage dependent infection. Usually, you see, uh, biological therapy is good to start, but you have to be very careful. This, this should be very dose calculated. You have to take care about the side effect, this is very important because usually we do not initiate with the biological therapy. Antibodies uh, regimen is not easily to handle, but uh, when you start it, you should be uh, very careful about their dosing the, as well as their side effects they are, because they are quick in action. Then second, we have the infliximab. This is a monoclonal antibody 
and this is 25 percent from mouse 75 percent from the from the human uh, and it, it is again a tnf alpha blocker or it bounds to the tnf alpha uh, again iv it is given iv infusion the, the root of which is iv and it, this is also given along with methotrex so methotrex that i told you is a main uh, drug for the DMARS. Never miss this drug uh, as in DMARD. It's a, it's a prototype of uh, DMARD drug methotrexate. It can be also given with other DMARDs and uh, usually the, the side effect like UTI, opportunistic infection, as you know, when, when the body's own uh, bacteria or flora are depressed, so we have the opportunistic infection. Eternal cell, this is a very important one. This is a very important uh, biological DMARD. This is given, uh, it's a very effective one. It's a recombinant re fusion protein. It is again bind to the TNF alpha and it also inhibits lymphotoxin alpha. Subcutaneous, so it is given 25 to 50 milligrams is the dose uh, and peak concentration within 72 hours. This is also again given with the methotrexate. So uh, these drugs are usually combined with this methotrexate. SLE is, is also a reaction, so the SS can, can be there. Few side effects are important. Anakindra is again uh, a, a drug which is a human interleukin-1 receptor antagonist. So it affects on interleukin-1. So <clears throat> this drug is used in cases who have failed on other drugs. So Anakindra is not a drug of first choice. Usually we deal with the uh, with the oral DMARDs, the biological. Once we see that the therapy are then we come uh, with this and a kindra because the other therapies are not effective. Local reaction adverse effects we have, and it is not com used in combination with other TNF. So you you use either one of these biological DMARDs. Uh, so combination is like methotrexate and and and, and the drug belongs to one group. Okay, for example, you cannot use two TNF alpha blockers simultaneously. So either you take TNF alpha uh, or, or with this into this. This is also not combined with TNF alpha even. So this is given uh, separately. Okay, then we have the uh, sorry, we have the better sept and this basically enables the activation of uh, CD20, these are the, they are the proteins of uh, the T uh, cell. They are the receptor basically present on the T cell and they enable the activation of this CD20 at uh, receptors. Depends on body weight, the dose, doses are given, but I told you again, the doses are not very important. Hypersensitive reaction time. So mechanism is important in the case and uh, the dosing is not very important and the, the side effect is important. Reduximab is another uh, biological remark, and this also affects on CD20 B cells. So these, uh, the receptors on the CD20 cells are the B cells, and uh, uh, this is also given uh, with the uh, the anti-TNF. When the anti-TNF agents are not working or they are refractory, then we can uh, give this drug. Again, this is combined with the methotrexate. Uh, is it is also given with the IV infusion. Okay, so dealing with the individual drugs, you have to remember the name like Etoximab, Abetisept, Enakendra, Denisab, they are all biological DMR. But what we summarize in the end is that DMR is a therapy that we usually give in the combination. So combination treatment of DMARD is very important. Uh, we usually give uh, these drugs. Uh, <clears throat> we can combine this uh, therapy, like we can combine up to three oral DMARDs. Okay, what, what is the maximum limit? Usually we're given with, with the methotrexate as an oral DMARD, and then we combine with the biological DMARDs. But with depending on the severity or the response of the drug, we can go up to three DMARD, three oral DMARDs, like uh, 
<laughs> we can use combination of methotrexate, sulfur cyanide, hydroxychloroquine. But usually we start with the methotrexate, and then we are uh, combine it with the biological remorse. So this this has seen that it produces a greater improvement in the disease. Usually one or two oral DMARs, and then it's combined with the biological DMARs. So this is a good combination. Single therapy is not seen to be very effective. For example, this is an uh, uh, example of the combination. For example, for we use uh, a one of the biological DMARs, and we use the other as a, for example, uh, usually we give uh, we give this uh, in the oral remarks, we give the methotrexate, whereas in the biological remarks, you can combine uh, with any other drugs. Okay. So, in case of biological remarks with oral remarks, we have higher chances of remission with biologic uh, than the oral remarks, whereas <coughs> uh, higher response rates for biological. This is almost the same. It is basically a copy one, but we what we combine is uh, usually we prefer the methotrexate as the oral remote, and then we combine with the biological. Adverse effect of biological remarks <clears throat> again, you can see that the risk of serious infection could be there because you are suppressing the immune system. So, when we are giving these drugs, we can also have a uh, problem with this uh, infections. Also, <coughs> combining two biological remarks, okay. Usually, we do not combine two biological remarks. We usually give one oral remark and the, and the single biological remark. In the case of patient with early rheumatoid arthritis, what is uh, our uh, preferred choice? We give with oral remarks first. If this is the early phase of the rheumatoid arthritis, and <clears throat> biological remarks are more effective at limiting radiographic evidence of progression. Okay, <clears throat> you see the condition. If the, if the condition is, is early and there is no uh, uh, radiographic evidence of the progression, then we, we only keep ourselves limited to the uh, oral remarks. But if we see that the, the disease is progressing, then we combine with it. Biological limits. Methotrexate dose is important. We use a 7.5 to 25 milligram per week. <clears throat> I, although I told you the doses are not important, but you should at least remember the dose of the methotrexate drug because this is the most commonly uh, drug that is used in the uh, uh, as a DMR. Patient with long standing active disease, we use two or three oral remarks. And uh, again, if, if the disease is progressing in combination, we can provide uh, with the, uh, again, uh, the monotherapy. So two or three oral remarks can be given. Uh, so, but you have to remember that the serious side effects of this drugs are also important. Okay, this is a, the last slide. Okay, now the session is uh, open for uh, any sort of question you want. I'm going to come in with a Okay, you can ask any question if you want to have. Okay, so the present show site with the table for biological remarks and site of I will show you. This is probably the slides if you can see okay. that <coughs> biological remarks with the site of action. Can you see this? Because the demands have a long list, but all you have to remember the <coughs> few oral, for in the oral, you always remember uh, the methotrexate instruction and the biological demand are specific.
Riga, can you see the slide I found there <coughs> uh, with the biological remarks and the site of action? You can respond on chat. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have multiple drugs, so, so you might have confusion in the drugs, but all you have to remember the name, uh, the classification, what are oral remarks, what are first line, what are second line. Uh, then you have biological remarks with their specific mechanism of action. Ideally, this uh, topic was uh, given in the two sections. So previously, the, we have two lectures of remarks one and two, in which we describe uh, oral remarks separately as well as biological remarks. This year we have uh, uh, schedule is made to have a combination of both both of these. So, so you would see a lot more drugs in a single lecture. <clears throat> so you might won't be able to focus much more, but all you have to remember uh, that they are classified. The question is, can the site of the biological undergo change and the drug becomes it? No, no. In the biological remarks, the target is always specific. You Because the, the antibodies, they are made to affect on the specific target of action. The target is not effective, but there is always a chance of, of tolerance or you so uh, decrease the activity of, of the drug. So this is a possibility. You, the, uh, the target is not changed, but the response to the to this target can be minimized. This is this happens to the all the drugs. We have uh, the phenomena like tolerance or tachyphylaxis, in which we find out that uh, the, the response could be reduced, but but otherwise target is not uh, changed. I see only Hadika Atala is only awake as the rest of the class is sleeping otherwise. So we have two, three minutes more because uh, we have second class at 10 o'clock. Okay, so remember uh, the classification. I should have also a summary table in one row so that you can easily memorize. But you can focus on two or three slides. Like this is the oral remarks, first line drugs. This is the second line drugs. And the, the third one that I have already shown you about the uh, biological remarks to this. So this is three slides are important to, to remember. Otherwise, mechanisms are different. Okay, thank you. I thought there are no more uh, questions. So uh, we close this session over here. Thank you very much for joining.